Hello friends, I'm Chad McCarvey and this is Faithful Performance where we explore the testimony of the biblical prophets and how they perfectly correlate with the current events of today. Thank you for joining us. Friends, in this episode we're going to discover the Shemitah year of 2021 to 2022 and how we could be witnessing the beginning of the collapse of the American Empire. Before we commence, it's important to understand the Shemitah cycle. It's in Leviticus 25. It's a seven-year cycle on God's prophetic timeline, and it is on the civil calendar, which begins on Rosh Hashanah, or the Feast of Trumpets, which occurs during the fall. We can look at it on the Gregorian calendar of September, October area, but the Feast of Trumpets is when the Shemitah cycle begins every seven years. And don't get it confused with the biblical calendar. Uh, we can look at it as the civil calendar began on Genesis 1 to Exodus 11. So anything we read from Genesis 1 to Exodus 11, if it says the first month of the year, is speaking of the civil calendar. That's when Adam opened up his eyes and he crowned God as king. And that began God's prophetic timeline of how long we've been on this earth is the civil calendar, which begins on the Feast of Trumpets or Rosh Hashanah. The biblical calendar is from Exodus 12 on 4. So we read in Exodus 12, the Lord told Moses that this was the beginning of month of the nation of Israel. That's when Israel left Egypt, Jew and Gentile. And that's called the biblical calendar, the ecclesiastical calendar that counts the Sabbaths, also the feast days, etc. So there's two different calendars when we read the Holy Bible. The one we're focused on today is the civil calendar, which again is when from Genesis 1 to Exodus 11, that's when it counts time for how long we've been on this earth. But that goes into the Shemitah cycle as well as we will see. So it's important to understand that, that the Shemitah cycle is a block of seven years. Uh, we can think of it as Daniel's 70th week. Uh, that is a Shemitah cycle. We'll be getting into the Israel uh, Shemitah cycle in the next video that we're doing. But on this video, we're talking about America uh, in the Shemitah cycle and how it's affected America and what we could be looking at in the Shemitah cycle of 2021 to 2022. So it's important to lay the foundation of the Shemitah cycle uh, to us and we're going to find this in Leviticus uh, 25. We're going to go through the Shemitah cycle, understand the prophetic understanding of it, at how it dealt with Israel. And once Israel broke the Shemitah cycle, it started to affect the nations. If you haven't seen the Shemitah cycle for the Ottoman Empire, uh, you can review that. Uh, it's in the uh, click, click on the link at the end of the video, and that will be available for you to watch as well. But the Shemitah cycle is very important for the Lord. It's going to occur until the end of the age, and we want to get the prophetic understanding of it or the principle of it as it deals with America and then we're going to go through the statistics that proves the Shemitah cycle has affected America. So let's first uh, set the foundation of the Shemitah cycle in Leviticus 25. In Leviticus 25 1 through 5 it says, And the Lord spoke to Moses on Mount Sinai saying, Speak to the children of Israel and say to them, When you come into the land of which I give you, then the land shall keep a Sabbath to the Lord. Six years you shall sow your field, and six years you shall prune your vineyard and gather its fruit. But in the seventh year there shall be a Sabbath of solemn rest for the land, a Sabbath to the Lord. You shall neither sow your field nor prune your vineyard. What grows of its own accord of your harvest you shall not reap, and nor gather the grapes of your untended vine, for it is a rest for the land. It is a year of rest for the land. So it's important for us to understand, this is amazing, that not only did the Lord command the children of Israel uh, to have a Sabbath day every week, but he wanted them to have a Sabbath year as well. Work six years, rest on the seventh year. This is totally amazing, but he also wanted the land to rest. Remember, he made a covenant with the land as well in the Abrahamic covenant. So he wanted the land to rest as well as the people and their servants, their animals, etc. So we can look at 
at it as a great uh, blessing that they had is just like the Sabbath day, they wanted the, he wanted the land to rest and the people to rest on the Sabbath day. He also wanted them to rest on the Sabbath year, which is, gives us great understanding of uh, prophetically with the 7,000th year when Messiah returns, it's going to be a thousand year rest, if you will. So all of this is important for us to understand as we read Leviticus 25, but it was also to keep them uh, from being greedy and also being greedy with their agriculture, with their money, with the works of their hands. Hands, you know, the pride uh, that they would have with the works of their hands as well. So he wanted everything to be balanced, to let them understand that the blessings come from the Lord only uh, and not of themselves. Okay, and now we look at the provisions for the seventh year. If he wanted them to rest on the seventh year, what provisions would he give them for the seventh year? So in Leviticus 25, 18 through 21, it says, so you shall observe my statutes and keep my judgments and perform them, and you will dwell in the land safely. Then the land will yield its fruit, and you will eat your fill and dwell there safely. And if you say, What shall we eat in the seventh year, since we shall not sow nor gather in our produce? Then I will command my blessing on you in the sixth year, and it will bring forth produce enough for three years. This is incredible. Uh, not only were they going to have a year rest on the seventh year, but on the sixth year, he was going to give them a triple blessing to last them the seventh year, the eighth year, and the ninth year going forward. Uh, this is totally incredible. What a great blessing uh, that the Lord was giving them. And again, it was to keep them from being uh, greedy, keep them humble, not uh, let the pride of man, and also to take care of the poor, to take care of the beast of the field. As we read in Exodus 23, it goes into the Shemitah as well. Uh, at Mount Sinai when the Lord uh, gave it to Moses. But in Leviticus 25, it wants, it, he, we want to understand that he wanted them to be uh, honest. He wanted them to be balanced. He wanted them not to be greedy. He wanted them to let the land rest, let the animals rest. It was a great blessing uh, for them to keep it. If they followed the Shemitah cycle, it was a great blessing. And if they didn't, it was going to be a great curse, which we're going to read in Leviticus 26. In Leviticus 26, 27 through 28, and also 31 through 35, this is the warning of not keeping the Shabbat uh, for the year. And after all of this, if you do not obey me, but walk contrary to me, then I will also walk contrary to you in fury. And I, even I, will chastise you seven times for your sins. I will lay your cities waste and bring your sanctuaries to desolation. And I will not smell the fragrance of your sweet aromas. I will bring the land to desolation, and your enemies who dwell in it be astonished at it. I will scatter you among the nations and draw a sword after you. Your land shall be desolate and your cities waste. Then the land shall enjoy its Sabbath as long as it lies desolate and you are in your enemy's land. Then the land shall rest and enjoy its Sabbath. As long as it lies desolate, it shall rest, for the time it did not rest on your Sabbath when you dwelt in it. Uh, this is a very stern warning from the Lord that they, were, they had to obey the Shemitah cycle, or if not, we see the results, we see what would happen, the consequences uh, that would happen to them. He would, uh, he would judge them tremendously hard, as we will see. So it's important to understand, we're trying to get the prophetic understanding of it. We're trying to get the principle that lies behind this seven-year cycle, especially the seventh year, okay, for a nation who loves God, who does his laws, does his commandments, is a great blessing. But for those who turn away from the Lord, uh, who was ordained by him, uh, talking about Israel and what we will see with America, then there is a judgment that goes along with that. So we're trying to get the prophetic understanding of it, the principle of the Shemitah cycle. This was only required of Israel to let the land rest uh, on the seventh year. But again, we're trying to get the principle and the prophetic understanding of it. And when we go through the st statistics of America, we will see how it's affected America as well. But they had to let the land rest, and if not, then there was going to be judgment, there was going to be a chastisement so that the land could enjoy its Sabbath. Remember, he made a promise to the land as well for the land to rest, not only the people, but also uh, the land. So now let's get into uh, also what the Shemitah means as well. It means the fall or the collapse or the shaking of, of things of a nation, if you will, if they did not follow that. But it was also the remissions of debt, the cancellation of debt, the nullification. There was a day that this would happen. It was called a Lul 29. A Lul 29 is the day, is the last day of the year on the civil calendar. Okay, the next day is Tishri 1, which is 
the Feast of Trumpets, Rosh Hashanah, Yom Teruah. You know, that begins the next year, so to speak. So right now we're in 5780. When we get to the Feast of Trumpets, it's followed by 5781. Again, it goes back into counting the time uh, from Adam to now. Okay, so it's important to understand that Elul 29 is the cancellation of debts, the nullification of all debts, and it should have been a great blessing, again, to keep everything balanced. Uh, with the Lord, with the peoples, keep them from being greedy, etc. And we find this in Deuteronomy 15, uh, 1 through 2. It says, At the end of every seven years, you shall grant a release of debts. And this is the form of the release. Every creditor who has lent anything to his neighbor shall release it. He shall not require it of his neighbor or his brother because it is called the Lord's release. So again, this is awesome. You know, this is if I borrowed money from someone at the end of the seven years, they were going to cancel out the debt if I had not paid it back by the end of the seven years. Again, it was to keep everything balanced, people from uh, not being greedy, uh, people not being the pride of their own works of their own hands, interest and all these things. And it was called the day of nullification or the remission of debt. So at the end of the seven years on a Lul 29, uh, they would wipe out all debts. It was the nullification of all debts. It was the Lord's release. It was a great blessing uh, to keep everything balanced the way that he wants us. So keep that in mind as we get into the statistics and we look at America and the Shemitah cycle, we're going to see this day, day of nullification, this Elul 29 uh, come to fruition. So now let's move forward uh, to the prophet Jeremiah. Again, we're trying to get the prophetic understanding of it. So we laid the foundation of the Shemitah cycle. You had to let the land rest uh, on the seventh year. There was going to be a triple blessing on the sixth year. If they did, uh, did it, it was a great blessing. But if they did not observe it or follow the commandment, then it was going to be judgment. It was going to be a chastisement uh, to the nation of Israel. And again, we're trying to take the prophetic understanding of it, the principle behind it as well. But the prophet Jeremiah was sent to the nation of Israel along with other prophets to warn them, call them to repentance uh, for not following the Lord's command in Leviticus 25, the Shemitah cycle, as we will see, and also for all the other apostasy that they were doing. So we want to go into the prophet Jeremiah because we have to remember Jeremiah is a prophet to the nations as well as Israel, as we will see. In Jeremiah 1, 4 through 5, 9 through 10, it says, Then the word of the Lord came to me, saying, Before I formed you in the womb, I knew you. Before you were born, I sanctified you. I ordain you a prophet to the nations. Then the Lord put forth his hand and touched my mouth. And the Lord said to me, Behold, I have put my words in your mouth. See, I have this day set you over the nations and over the kingdoms to root out and to pull down, to destroy and to throw down, to build and to plant. So this is incredible. The prophet Jeremiah is a prophet to the nations, to the kingdoms. When we read Jeremiah 46 through 52, he prophesies this is for the future of the nations of the Middle East, the judgment of them that will occur at the Messiah's second coming. Okay, So he's a prophet to the nations, but also we can look at the templates that he's given to the nation who once knew God, but turned away from God, and the judgments that came upon them with sacrificing their children uh, through the fire to Moloch, with the apostasy that they were doing, the spiritual adultery that they were doing, the paganism, the apostasy, and all of these things uh, that the nation of Israel was doing. He went to warn them, to call them to repentance uh, for that. Uh, once uh, they rejected the repentance and they didn't follow Jeremiah, as we all know, and I would uh, encourage anyone to read the book of Jeremiah. It is an awesome book and it shows all of God's attributes, okay, with the call to repentance over and over. He's very patient. He is long-suffering, he is kind, he is gracious, but at, he is merciful. But there is a time when his mercy and his grace ends for a nation who turns against him, and then judgment will follow. Okay, and we find that in Jeremiah 25, 8 through 11. Therefore, thus says the Lord of hosts, because you have not heard my words, behold, I will send and take all the families of the north, says the Lord, and Nebuchadnezzar, the king of Babylon, my servant, and I will bring them against the land, against the inhabitants, against those nations around, and I will utterly destroy them and make them an astonishment, a hissing and perpetual des desolations. Moreover, I will take from them the voice of mirth and the voice of gladness, the voice of the bridegroom, the voice of the bride, the sound of millstones and the light of the lamp. 
and this whole land shall be a desolation and an astonishment, and these nations shall serve the king of Babylon 70 years. This is totally incredible. The prophet Jeremiah is taking you back to Leviticus 26 about the judgment. It's almost the same verbiage as Moses uh, ordained in Leviticus 26. Obviously, the prophet Jeremiah knew the Torah, and he reverted them back saying, hey, you did not follow the Lord's command, and this is what's going to happen to you uh, with the destruction that Moses uh, prophesied. Jeremiah is just confirming that as a second witness to them and taking them back to the original revelation which is the Torah. Okay, so this is important. They were going to be exiled uh, for 70 years for not following the Lord's commands, especially the Shemitah cycle, as we will see. And then after that, uh, the Lord was going to judge the king of Babylon and Babylon. So this is important for us to understand. Once Israel rejected the Shemitah cycle and rejected the Lord's commands, then the Shemitah cycle started to affect the nations. Okay, so Israel fell, Shemitah cycle, Babylon rose on a Shemitah cycle as well. And then the Lord, after 70 years, seven times 10, seven is spiritual perfection, 10 is divine perfection of order, that's 70. Okay, then, then Babylon was going to fall and the Medo-Persian empire was going to rise. So you see the Shemitah cycle affecting not only Israel, but also the nations once Israel disobeyed it. Okay, so Israel fell on the Shemitah cycle, Babylon rose on the Shemitah cycle, 70 years later, Babylon fell, Medo-Persia rose on the Shemitah cycle. You can find that in Daniel 5 with the writing on the, raw, uh, writing on the wall. As we all know in Daniel 5, many, many tekel a parson. Uh, that means that the Babylonian empire was weighed in the scales and the balance, which occurs on the Feast of Trumpets when the books are open. Uh, that's when the judgment day will occur as well on the Feast of Trumpets. Okay, so the books are open, they were weighed in the balance, on the Shemitah cycle, and then the Medo-Persian Empire came in control. And we find this in Jeremiah 25, 12 through 14. Then it will come to pass when seven years are completed that I will punish the king of Babylon and that nation, the land of the Chaldeans, for their iniquity, says the Lord, and I will make it a perpetual desolation. So I will bring on that land all my words that I have pronounced against him, and all that is written in this book, which Jeremiah has prophesied concerning all the nations. For many nations and great kings shall be served by them also, and I will pay them according to their deeds and according to the works of their hands. So this goes with what we just said. Okay, after 70 years, the Shemitah cycle, you're going to have Babylon that fell, Medo-Persian rises, Daniel 5. So we can see how it's affected the nations, not only Israel, on this Shemitah cycle. So before we continue and uh, bring it up to date with America, well, I wanted to confirm why, uh, one of the reasons why that, or the main reason why that uh, the children of Israel was exiled from the land. And we find this in 2 Chronicles uh, 36, 15 through 21. And this will give us great clarity of how important the Shemitah cycle is, uh, not only to Israel, but also as we see it affecting the nations as well. In 2 Chronicles 36, 15 through 21, uh, it says, And the Lord God of their fathers sent warnings to them by the messengers. He's talking about the children of Israel in 586 B.C., rising up early and sending them because he had compassion on his people and on his dwelling place. But they mocked the messengers of God, despised his words, and scoffed at his prophets until the wrath of the Lord rose against his people till there was no remedy. Therefore he brought against them the king of the Chaldeans, who killed their young men with the sword in the house of their sanctuary and had no compassion on young man or virgin or the aged or the weak. He gave them all into his hand and all the articles from the house of God, great and small, the treasures of the house of the Lord and the treasures of the king and of his leaders, all these he took to Babylon. Then they burned the house of God, broke down the wall of Jerusalem, burned all its palaces with fire and destroyed all of its precious possessions. And those who escaped from the sword, he carried away to Babylon, where they became servants to him and his sons until the rule of the kingdom of Persia. What we just discussed, after the 70 years, the kingdom of Persia rose to fulfill the word of the Lord by the mouth of Jeremiah until the land had enjoyed her Sabbaths. As long as she lay desolate, she kept Sabbath to fulfill 70 years. So again, this reverts back to Leviticus 26, the judgment so the land can enjoy its Sabbath. 
This is how important the Shemitah cycle was. Again, he made a promise to the land, the land to enjoy its rest on the weekly Sabbath, and also every seventh year, the land was to rest, and if they did not obey it, the Shemitah cycle would become a national curse, which it did. They were exiled in 586 BC on the Shemitah cycle. Babylon rose, then Babylon fell on the Shemitah cycle 70 years later, and then Medo-Persia rose. So we can see how, again, it's affected the nations. So it's important as we look and bring this up uh, today, other empires that has been affected uh, by the Shemitah cycle. Again, we did a video on the Ottoman Empire in the last video that we did. You can find that at the end of the video in a link if you want to watch that, how it could be rising in 20, uh, on the Shemitah cycle as well in 2021, 2022. But also on this video, it's important to understand the empires that have risen and fallen on the Shemitah cycle as well, including America. Okay, so the Ottoman Empire, as we discussed in the last video, it started to collapse in 1916 17 on the Shemitah cycle, and then it did collapse seven years later, 1923 1924, on that cycle. It's important to understand that the Gregorian calendar will overlap uh, the Shemitah cycle. So when I say 1916 1917, it's because that the Shemitah cycle starts in the fall of the Gregorian calendar to the next fall. So it encompasses two years, but on the biblical calendar, it's just one year. Okay, so when I say 1916, 1917, that encompasses the Shemitah cycle from fall to fall uh, on uh, the biblical calendar. Okay, but it's important to realize also that the British Empire fell in 1916, 1917. Again, the Shemitah cycle, and we'll get more into the British Empire in next week's video when we talk about the Shemitah cycle in Israel, but the British, uh, the British Empire fell on the Shemitah year, 1916-17. The Ottoman Empire began to collapse 1916-17. It did uh, collapse on 1923-1924, Shemitah cycle. And then you had the Japanese Empire that fell in 1944-1945. Again, Shemitah cycle, Nazi Germany, Again, fell on the Shemitah cycle, 1944, 1945, which is interesting because 1938, the Shemitah cycle before is when really it got really bad with the, the Jewish people, with Nazi Germany, etc. So we can understand that the Shemitah cycle has affected not only Israel, but also the ancient empires. And also when we look at 1916, 17, 1944, 1945, we're seeing how it's affected other nations as well, as we will see. And it's definitely affected America as well. So before we get into uh, America with the Shemitah cycle, it's important to understand the principles and the prophetic understanding of the Shemitah cycle uh, as we go forward. Uh, it requires a nation who knows God, which America has. Okay, we were founded on Jude Christian principles. We we knew God. We know God. We, we proclaim that we do uh, do His will, obey His commandments, and all of these things. Spread the gospel, uh, but it acknowledges a nation acknowledges God's sovereignty. Okay, the Shemitah cycle acknowledges God's sovereignty uh, over the land and over our lives. That all the blessings come from God and God alone, and not the work of our hands. Okay, so the Shemitah cycle really makes us understand that and to rely on His faithfulness, okay, and that He provides for all of our needs. Again, it's not the work of our hands. It's all the blessings that the, law, uh, the Lord ordains upon uh, His people. Uh, the Shemitah cycle also requires a nation to be obedient, okay, and worship and go with the laws, go with the commandments. Again, I'm not saying that America or any other country has to let the land rest on the seventh year, but it's the prophetic understanding to obedience, okay, to be faithful to the Lord and His commandments, okay, to honor Him, to bless Him, and to, uh, again, be obedient. And then we have the Shemitah cycle will be either a national blessing or a national curse, depending on how a nation behaves, but especially a nation who knows God, okay, like America does. It does go on how uh, either national blessing or a national curse. And then the Shemitah cycle, it will uh, either bless or judge a nation's prosperity, pro uh, material blessings uh, that goes with the productivity, also the sustenance and all of the things that we that we need. So it's either a 
national blessing or a national curse, depending on how we behave uh, as a country. Okay, so it's very important as we look at the prophetic understanding of it and, and the principle of it. Again, I'm not saying America has to let the land rest. That was only for the nation of Israel. But as we will see, the Shemitah cycle was a great blessing to America. And then all of a sudden it turned on certain behavior, certain laws, certain things that we put into our uh, law books, it started to become a curse uh, every seven years, which we will see. Okay, first, uh, before we begin with this, I do want to give credit to Jonathan Kahn. Uh, he's the one who really brought the, the Shemitah cycle, the mystery of the Shemitah cycle, uh, to the forefront with America. So the statistics that we have, uh, uh, most are from him that I've confirmed, but also we're going to add to it. I'm going to add to it uh, some of the things that we've spoke about in other videos with America, and also some of the things that are nice tie-ins with this as well. But I wanted to give him credit. He did a great job on that. It's very anointed. I would suggest uh, reading his book, excuse me, The Mystery of the Shemitah, and also all of his other books. He does a great job. He's very anointed. So I did want to give credit where credit is due uh, with that. But we're also going to add uh, many things that we've spoken about in other videos and also uh, some of the things that, of my own research that I found that are very interesting with the tie-ins. And it even goes back into the tie-in of the Ottoman Empire and some of the patterns that we're seeing with that. Okay? So are we about to witness uh, on this Shemitah cycle of 2021, 2022, are we about to witness the beginning of the collapse of the American empire? Okay, so whenever we look back at America, again, America was founded on Judeo-Christian principles. Uh, we were patterned after Israel, okay? Uh, it was almost like the new Israel, you know, we came out of the British Empire, so to speak, and they came out of Egypt. So it was almost like a new Israel. You know, all of, a lot of our cities are, are Jewish or are Jewish named cities, if you will, from Israel. Uh, also the mountains that we have in America as well, uh, they're named after some of the Israeli mountains, etc. Also the Feast of Tabernacles, that oh, our Thanksgiving was patterned after the Feast of tabernacles for thanksgiving and rejoicing so we can see there's a, a correlation again i'm not saying that america is the covenant land or anything like that all i'm saying is there's a pattern and there's a, a correlation with america as founded by god you know we're founded on judeo-christian principles and we try to stand on god's law and on his commandments and we have been the safest refuge uh, for the Jewish people. You know, I think that's very important to understand that. You know, since uh, 1492, when uh, Christopher Columbus sailed the ocean blue, uh, we've been the safest refuge for the Jewish people in the history of the world. It's not even a comparison. And also, we've been the big supporter of Israel, the nation of Israel from 1948 on forward. Okay, so it's important. And the, uh, another main thing to, to uh, say here is we also have been the number one sponsor of Christianity, of spreading the gospel uh, to the nations as well. So America has this beautiful, beautiful relationship with the Lord God Almighty. We were founded on that. And so whenever a nation knows God like we have, there is great responsibility with that to keep hold of his commandments, his laws, and to not do the things that we are going to discuss uh, once we see that transition from the great empire to some of the apostasy and the straight out lawlessness that we have done, there's going to be consequences for that. But uh, we're going to go first with the buildup of America. Uh, as we all know, in 1916 and 1917, the First World War, uh, that's when America became on the world stage. That's when we started to become the world's dominant superpower was on the Shemitah cycle in 1916-1917 uh, during the First World War as we know. However, during that time there was a stock market collapse on that Shemitah cycle in America which was a 40 percent stock market crash uh, during that time that was wiped out. But again, we, we, came, we became upon the world stage at that time during World War I, and we began the dominance of the American uh, dynasty, if you will, the American empire. Okay, now we fast forward to 1930 and 1931. Again, it was a Shemitah cycle. Uh, we all know that's the Great Depression, and 86% of the stock market was wiped out, and it took until 1954 uh, to return to the pre-crash level. So we're seeing this Shemitah cycle uh, occur 
even in America on the Shemitah cycle 1916, 1917, then you have 1930, 1931, again on the Shemitah cycle. Then we fast forward seven years later to 1937 and 1938. This was called the recession of the Great Depression. Uh, manufacturing uh, employment fell by 25%, industrial output by 30%. 50% uh, of the stock market was wiped out and 4 million people lost uh, their jobs. Okay, so again, we're seeing the Shemitah cycle effect of uh, the, uh, the economic ram of America. And then in 1944 and 1945, uh, this is World War II. Uh, this is when America was confirmed as the dominant superpower uh, of the world. I don't think there's any question about that. Uh, this is the generation that was called the Great Generation, okay? Uh, after both uh, world wars, we came as the dominant superpower of the world. There's, uh, world. there's no question about that. And this is when the World Trade Center was conceived. So keep that in mind. It was conceived, the World Trade Centers, uh, was conceived on a Shemitah year in 1945. So as we go forward, we're going to kind of put this together. So keep that in mind as that's when the World Trade Center was conceived was on a Shemitah cycle. So shortly after that, 17 years after that, that's when I personally believe that uh, the Shemitah cycle turned into a strict curse because of the behavior uh, that we have done. Now, uh, we've seen in the past examples that, you know, we've had some economic crashes on the Shemitah cycle, but now we're starting to see how it's going to be very repetitive. Every seven years, it was going to be, it was going to hit America's economic ram very hard and also the military ram as well uh, once we made a certain decision uh, that we're, we're about to discuss. So we're going to start to see the transition Position where it's going to be every seven years uh, that the Shemitah cycle has come to fruition uh, in America. Okay, in 1962, which was about 17 short years after America became the dominant superpower, we made the grave mistake of taking prayer out of school. Okay, and that was the first bad decision, if you will, that we've made uh, at the highest court of the land, the Supreme Court, uh, that they took prayer out of school in 1962. And what happened after that? 1966, which was a Shemitah cycle, uh, we had a stock market crash. Okay, and this is important as well because 1945, as I mentioned, that's when the trade centers were conceived. And then 1966, that's when they broke ground. That's when they started building uh, it. So again, we're on the Shemitah cycle with the World Trade Centers, 1945 conceived, 1966, they started building it. And we will see what happens in the next Shemitah cycle. In 1973, uh, this was a very important Shemitah cycle for a lot of reasons. Uh, this is, again, we rose to prominence in 1917 on the Shemitah cycle. In 1945, it confirmed as we were the dominant superpower uh, of the world. And this is when I began, this is what I believe when we started to go the other way, when it really started turning into a curse of the Shemitah cycle every seven years. Now, why is that? Well, we all, we all understand that this is when Roe versus Wade, uh, the highest court of the land, the Supreme Court. This is when uh, they put into the law books the abortion, uh, offering our, you know, killing our children, murdering our children. Uh, that was on January 22nd, 1973, during the Shemitah cycle. And I believe since that time, we're going to start seeing the seven year cycle come to fruition. Uh, during that time, the Shemitah cycle, which was on the seventh year, we saw multiple crashes. Okay, I don't think that's by coincidence when you put into something in the law books like that. Remember, in 1962, the Supreme Court took out prayer. 1973, the law of abortion, the murdering of our children. And then we saw multiple crashes uh, during that time with the currency crash, also the oil, Christ, uh, the oil crisis as well. 45% of the stock market was wiped out. Uh, GDP shrank from 7% to negative 2%, which is a 70% drop. And it took 20 years to regain the levels lost in this collapse. 1993, that's how long it took. And the inflation soared uh, from 3% in 1972 to 12% 12 12 in 1974. 
The S&P, which is the standard in Poor's 500, was at a peak of 120, then it collapsed at a level of 62, which is a 48% drop. Okay, the collapse in, it was a collapse in the economic ram and also a severe global recession. Again, we were the dominant superpower, the economic superpower at that time. So if we got hit, that means the global uh, economy would get hit as well. And again, 1945, we saw the World Trade Centers conceived. 1966, they started building it on the Shemitah cycle. And then on April 4th, 1973, which is about the middle of the Shemitah cycle, the World Trade Centers were officially finished and inaugurated. So again, keep that in mind, the Shemitah, 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 conceived, built it, and then finished on the Shemitah cycle. And we will see what happens uh, on the uh, Shemitah cycle as we go forward. And not only was the economic side of America hit very hard in 1973, but also the military power or the conception or the what people understood as America being the dominant military superpower, especially after both world wars, uh, that was uh, kind of diminished with 1973 with the Vietnam War. As we all remembered, it weakened our uh, the world's perception of our military. The almighty America was uh, defeated in some cases in the Vietnam War. I think some would say that we've lost that war. I'm not saying that, but some would say that. But it definitely diminished the perception of America's dominance as the military superpower to a certain degree. And I don't think that's by any coincidence when we put into law the killing of our unborn, the, ec the economy goes down, the military receives its first uh, defeat, if you will. Uh, and I don't think that's by coincidence uh, that that happened. Okay, now let's move forward to 1980. Again, seven years, Shemitah cycle. So you're going to start seeing this. 1966, after we uh, eliminated prayer from school, stock market crash, 1973, killing of the unborn. We see a military, uh, our military uh, diminishing, uh, if you will, and also you have the economic uh, crash. Seven years later, 1980, we have a double dip recession. Okay, uh, this is the Dow drop. The Dow Jones dropped from 903 uh, on February 13th to 759 on April 21st. The S&P reached a level of 140. It collapsed to 102, with the stock market losing 27% of its value. And this is when, in 1979, we all remember the uh, Iranian Revolution, okay? Uh, it triggered a massive oil uh, uh, prices, which GDP shrank from 5% to 1.5%. Inflation soared to double digits in America, and we had high levels of employed. Again, the Shemitah cycle. You cannot go against the ordained laws of the Lord God Almighty and expect to be blessed in any kind of realm. Okay, now let's move forward seven years later. Again, seven, 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 Shemitah cycle, 1987, Black Monday. Okay, we all remember that. It's one of the worst days in stock market history. Uh, and in fact, it was the greatest stock market crash in American history is on that Black Monday. 33% of the stock market uh, wiped out. And then it took two years to regain the levels lost on that one day, on Black Monday. Again, you're seeing the Shemitah cycle come to fruition every seven years. Let's fast forward to 1994. Again, a Shemitah cycle. Okay. And this was called the Great Bond Market Massacre. Uh, the bond market, we have to understand the bond market is greater, is twice as large as the stock market. So this was important because it really affected in a, in a deeper sense with the economy. Okay, uh, Fortune Magazine called it the worst bond market loss in history, okay, of the American history. Uh, the bond market lost $1.5 trillion in assets wiping out 1.5 billion of actual debt. Again, it occurred on the Shemitah cycle. We're seeing this pattern of every seven years, there's an economic uh, fall, there's an economic collapse in a way. So now let's fast forward to 2000 and 2001. Again, this is a Shemitah cycle, again, seven years. And there's a lot of interesting things that occurred on this. So we all remember the dot-com crash. Okay, that occurred in the stock market. 37% uh, of the stock market was wiped out. Uh, this coincided in, uh, with the 9-11 attacks. 
okay, uh, that, uh, that struck the financial district, the World Trade Centers, as we know, uh, symbols, and it was basically the symbols of America's economic power. So let's put this in perspective. So 1945, the towers were conceived, 1966, they were started building on it. 1973, they were completed. All of those were on Shemitah cycles. 28 years later, 2001, the power, the symbolic power of America's financial realm was destroyed in the attacks of 9-11 again on the Shemitah cycle. I think the Lord's really trying to get our attention about our behavior and some of the laws that we've put into place with the killing of the unborn, taking prayer out of school. Uh, Wall Street shut down for a week, okay, during the 9-11 attacks. Okay, and it was right before the end of the Shemitah cycle. And remember what we talked about with the Lul 29, the day of nullification, uh, the last day before the Tishri 1, which is the new cycle that would begin. Okay, so it shut down for a week, but when it did open up, it was on a Lul 29, the last day, and the stock market plunged 684 points. Okay, and at that time, it was the greatest point crash in stock market history uh, during at that time of 2001 okay and then we had in, uh, the in the industrial production declined six percent so again we're seeing the shemitah cycle really come to effect every seven years and it started to become a great curse once we took prayer out of school uh, once we uh, started uh, putting in walls with the killing of the unborn, etc., and the Lord got our attention. No matter how you look at 9-11, if we're looking at it from a spiritual understanding and a spiritual sense, a biblical understanding of what the Lord's trying to do, remember the Shemitah is the fall, the collapse, if a nation turns against God's ordained principles and against his laws, which we have with the killing of the unborn, taking prayer out of school, and other things as well with the apostasy that we we have witnessed over the decades uh, with the 60s sex revolution and all that stuff. You know, we're starting to see the judgment of the Almighty on the seventh year of the Shemitah cycle uh, as we see it, uh, as we see the pattern come true. Every seven years we're seeing it and he got our attention on 9-11 on 2001 from an economic understanding, from a spiritual understanding of the collapse. Okay, and that's what the World Trade Center stood for was the collapse uh, it stood for the economic power, the supreme dominance of America as the economic superpower of the world. And he uh, allowed that to happen to get our attention uh, with uh, what he's trying to do with America to try to get us to turn back to his ways, to eliminate, to terminate, uh, to abolish the abortion uh, law, to get prayer back in school, to turn our ways back to him. This is what he's trying to do, just like the prophet Jeremiah uh, tried to get the people to repent and turn back to the Lord. This is what he's trying to get us to do. He's trying to get us to return back to his ways so that we can be blessed and not cursed with this Shemitah cycle. Okay, as we move forward to the next Shemitah cycle is 2007 and 2008. Uh, this gets more recent to where we, we can all remember these things. Uh, it was called the Great Recession or the global financial crisis. Remember, America is the dominant economic superpower at that time, okay, but it affects also the globe because we're all entangled together uh, with the banking industries, etc. But it was the worst financial crisis since the Great Depression, okay? That's a 19, I mean, it's a long time ago, almost 100 years ago, okay, or 70 years ago, so to speak. So it's 2007, 2008, the worst financial crisis since the Great Depression. It threatened the collapse of major banking institutions. Again, the government bailed them out or they would have fallen. Uh, it crashed the real estate market. Uh, I'm in the real estate, that's my occupation. Uh, so I remember that very uh, clearly, that it crashed the real estate market as well. Uh, Bear Stearns and Lehman Brothers collapsed. It wiped away trillions of dollars from the global market, from the U.S. market. It launched a global recession. Uh, more than 50% of the stock market was wiped out. Think about that. 50% was wiped out uh, completely. And it uh, took a year and a half to collapse, which is very interesting. And we're going to get into that as we look at the coronavirus and what we're seeing with the coronavirus right before this next cycle. And then on the last day, again, on a low 29, remember in 2000. Uh, one, on the last day, it dropped 684 points. On the low 29, the day of notification, the cancellation of all debts, the release, the shaking, 
on the exact same day again, seven years later to the exact day, okay, a little 29, the stock market plunged 777 points. So again, we all know what seven means, a spiritual perfection, and times that by three is 21. So a triple dose of spiritual perfection, 777, it plunged. I think the Lord's trying to get our attention of where we need to be, what we need to go back. We need to repent. We need to not be... Uh, prideful in the work of our hands, relying on the work of our hands, the greedy of money, etc., etc., just like the children of Israel was back before they were eventually destroyed. So I don't think it's by coincidence that the Lord's getting our attention with these numbers and also this Shemitah cycle uh, of what we're seeing every seven years, there is a judgment. Okay, this is America's under the hand of judgment right now. And when I say judgment, I say that very lightly. I should say shaking because we do not want to see the Lord's judgment. That's 586 BC. That's 70 AD. That's destruction. That's judgment. That's chastisement. And I think he's just giving us a shaking right now would be a better term to use than judgment because we don't want to see the judgment of the Almighty uh, come. Okay, so that uh, leads us to uh, 2015. Uh, what happened seven years, Shemitah cycle, 2015? Was there an economic collapse? And also, was there another a uh, bad decision made by the Supreme Court? The answer is yes and yes. On June 26, 2015, uh, the Supreme Court, the House Court in the land went against God's ordained laws of creation and they ordained or put into law that same-sex marriages were approved in all 50 states. Okay, this was a, another detrimental decision, poor decision uh, against God's laws, against his commandments. So again, when we look at the Shemitah cycle for every seven years, you would think, especially after 9-11, that America would turn its face back to God, be on our faces, repent. And go and go for God's laws and His commandments. Abolish abortion. Put prayer back in school. Uh, put the Ten Commandments back in our courthouse steps. Put God in our lives, not out of lives. And what have we done? We have fallen deeper in to apostasy, deeper into where we could see the judgment of the Almighty come upon America. You do God is not mocked, okay? So we have to understand that when we have two national laws that go directly against, defiance against God's uh, laws of creation, etc., you're going to receive chastisement, you're going to receive a shaking, and eventually, if we do not abolish these two laws and commandments, you're going to see the judgment of the Almighty, and we're going to get into those scriptures that confirm that. But in 2015, uh, right after uh, that was uh, ordained by the Supreme Court, uh, the Dow Jones and S&P 500 began to collapse in May. The Russell 2000 index began to collapse in June. Uh, the Shanghai Composite over in China began to collapse as well in June. And what happened? We saw uh, an estimated 16% of the, again, we're all, this is a global financial uh, collapse that we're seeing because we're all in it together uh, as an industry, but it wiped out 16% of the British markets, 18% uh, of the French markets, 25% of the German markets, 4,000 points from the Indian markets, 12,000 points from Brazilian markets, $2 trillion from the U.S. markets, $11 trillion from the world's financial realm. Think about that, $11 trillion is a lot of money uh, from the world's financial realm. And it produced the Shemitah cycle of 2015, 2014, 2015. It produced three of the greatest stock market crashes in Wall Street history. Okay, global trade literally collapsed. Uh, the commodity indexes collapsed. It was the biggest collapse since the previous Shemitah cycle in 2008. China became the largest trading nation and economic power. So again, America was dethroned uh, from its economic power in 2015. China became the largest trading nation and economic power at that time. And in terms of making money and investment, uh, it was reported that the 2015 Shemitah cycle was the worst year in 78 years. Think about that. So again, we're seeing this Shemitah cycle occur over and over. Every seven years, there is a shaking of the economic ram because of the decisions that we've made of the Supreme Court, the highest court in our land, 1966 with prayer, 1973 with abortion, 2015, okay, with homosexuality of the gay marriages, 
uh, being approved. So what can we expect in the Shemitah cycle of 2021-2022? Well, if the cycle continues, if the pattern continues, and I surely believe, I'm sure you do as well, that America as a nation has fallen deeper and deeper and deeper into apostasy and against God's laws and commandments. You just look at the world today or you look at America today and there's division, there's burning of Bibles in Portland, there's just apostasy, good is evil, evil is good. All of these uh, terrible things are happening just like with Israel back in before 586 BC. We've had uh, we've had prophetic words, we've had uh, prophets, we've had messengers, we've had preachers, we've had all of these people warning America over and over, decade after decade, year after year, about our apostasy, and eventually uh, the judgment of the Almighty will come upon America. And whenever we look at uh, mathematics, okay, and statistics and patterns, we have to understand that there's something going on uh, with the Shemitah cycle, with America, and all, obviously with the world as well. And when we look at America uh, in particular, uh, we have the math, 1917 to 1945 is 28 years. 1945 to 1973, 28 years. 1973 to 2001 is 28 years. In 2001 to 2029 is again 28 years. So what's going on with these 28 year segments? Okay, well 1917 is when America became on the world stage, and then 1945 is when we were approved, if you will. That's when there's no question that we were the dominant superpower of the world. 28 years. 1945 to 1973. 28 years. Well, what happened in 1945? That's when the trade centers were conceived. 1973, 28 years, is when they were finished, when they were, they were inaugurated. Now we go 28 years from 1973 to 2001, that's when the trade centers were destroyed, okay? Again, 28 years. And now we have 2001 to 2029, what can we make of that? Well, if the pattern continues, there's something that's, it should, uh, that's going to happen on 2029 if the pattern continues. And we're going to get into this because what's so interesting, uh, as we see, the number 28 is a multiple, okay, and then it has the significance of 7 times 4 when we break down the number. Well, the number 7 is spiritual perfection, okay? The number 4 is creative works, and what's interesting about the number 4 is 3 plus 1. Okay, three, we can think of it as the Father, the Son, the Holy Spirit, the Trinity, and then plus one, what comes next is, excuse me, the creative works. Okay, so we have to understand that he's trying to get our attention with this number 28, and when we look at biblical numerology, uh, there was 28 times uh, that God used donkeys uh, spoken of in sp scripture that refers to a vain man, okay? And we can find that in the scriptures that the number 28, there was 28 times that refers to the vain man, which is mentioned in Ecclesiastes 3, 1 through 8. So I think we can all uh, agree that America is the vain man, if you will, the pride, the ego. Uh, it, it's all about America, right? That's how we look at it. It's about us. It's about America, our pride, our ego, our wealth, etc. And the Lord will call that a vain man, Ecclesiastes 3, 1 through 8. So if the pattern continues, we're in for an, uh, an amazing Shemitah cycle that could be for the worse. Okay, and we all need to understand that and to prepare for that, that from that 2021-2022 Shemitah cycle to 2029, uh, we could be witnessing uh, some things that we definitely do not want to see if we do not turn back to God as a nation. And I certainly do not see that when I look at our political ram from the top to our Congress. I do not see that America will abolish abortion. I do not see that they will abolish same-sex marriage. I do not see that. Now, I pray for that. I hope for that. But I personally do not see that. And until we do that, these Shemitah cycles are going to be very rough. And there's going to be a Shemitah cycle that's going to be incredibly rough, uh, basically almost like uh, the Shemitah cycle of 586 BC, if we're not careful uh, with uh, not turning our ways back to the Lord God Almighty. Uh, with great wealth and great responsibility, you know, we have an opportunity to be the greatest nation on earth. But when we turn our ways against the Lord, we are not a Christian nation. A Christian nation does not 
abort 63 million kids, okay? Israel put thousands of kids through a uh, mullet, through sacrificing the ch uh, We have put tens of millions of kids uh, to mullet, to murdering our children. And the Lord will, he is not mocked, he will avenge the blood that is crying from the ground uh, right now for America. And we definitely have blood on our hands. So this Shemitah cycle, and I also wanted to uh, go in align with what's going to occur uh, that we've seen, I'm sorry, with the celestial bo uh, bodies in the sky, the warnings that he's given us uh, with the celestial bodies. As we all know, in Genesis 1:14, God created the sun and the moon for signs and seasons, for specific signs and seasons. Okay, so we have to understand that he's going to use his celestial bodies to warn Israel, the Jewish people, and also the nations. Okay, and the rabbinical thought is, the moon is for Israel, okay, and the uh, sun is for the nations, okay, as the nations, the sun, is larger than Israel, the moon, okay, so that's the rabbinical thought that we have to understand that, and it's very important, and I would like to read a couple of scriptures that confirm how important the celestial bodies are in the skies, and what we have witnessed in America as the warnings of what could be coming with judgment. In Psalms 89, 35 through 37, it says, Once I have sworn by my holiness, I will not lie to David. His seed shall endure forever, his throne as the sun before me. It shall be established forever like the moon, even like the faithful witness in the sky. So this is a confirmation of the Davidic covenant. You know, he will not lie to David. The Davidic covenant, that's uh, Yeshua will come and sit on David's everlasting throne uh, at his, during his millennial kingdom. Uh, we can find that uh, in the scriptures as we all know, but he's confirming how important the sun and the moon is. The moon is his faithful witness in the sky. Okay, the sun and the moon are his faithful witness in the sky. Actually, and every, whenever we read Psalms 104, 19, it also says he appointed the moon for seasons. The sun knows it's going down. So this is important for us to understand that he's going to use his celestial bodies in the skies as warnings, as signs, as seasons, uh, for seasons, as we mentioned in Genesis 1.14. And it's important when we look at uh, America and, and the solar eclipse that we had on August 21st, uh, 2017, okay? So we're gonna go on just recent history uh, with the importance of God's celestial bodies in the sky. But on August 21st, 2017, we had a solar eclipse over America. And I, most people were celebrating and partying and having a good time with it, but I took it as a warning, you know, as most of us did who uh, keep up with God's signs and what he's trying to tell us. But I took it as a warning to America. And what's so interesting with it, it kind of correlates to the Ottoman Empire. Uh, what I mean by that is, as we discussed in last, uh, the last video that we did with the Shemitah cycle, the Ottoman Empire, uh, it started to collapse in 1916 and 1917 and on a Shemitah cycle. And then the next Shemitah cycle, 1923-24, it did collapse. Well, what's so interesting is in 1914, on August 21st, 2017, 1914, there was a solar eclipse over the Ottoman Empire. Okay, well, how that correlates with America is on August 21st, 2017, we had a solar eclipse over America. And then look at what we're dealing with now, three years later with the coronavirus. Could that be a pre prelude <clears throat> excuse me, could that be a prelude of what we're about to see uh, with America, okay? And what's so interesting is not only the same date, August 21st, 2017 on the Gregorian calendar, it's the same date on the biblical calendar of 29. This is not by coincidence. Uh, the calendars are, are different and uh, the Hebrew calendar is 360 days, the Gregorian calendar is 365 days, so the days do not align every year. It takes a while for the dates to be on the same uh, day as I just mentioned, okay, August 21st and also of 29 does not always happen every year like that, okay, because the way the calendars work. So for the Ottoman Empire and the American Empire to have that same solar eclipse on the same Gregorian and biblical date, I think is paramount. I think we all need to look into this and pray about this because just as they started to collapse three years later, are we starting to see us collapse? Now there's about a year off because three years it began the Shemitah cycle for the Ottoman Empire and for us it will be four years, okay? So there's a year discrepancy, but the same principle of understanding it happened on August 21st, 
of 29 both solar eclipses did so could it be an omen okay it goes back into the three you know the three plus one the four years that we mentioned with the number 28 uh, could it be an omen of what we're about to witness on the Shemitah cycle of 2021 and 2022 the beginning of the collapse of the American Empire again this takes time for an empire like America or the Ottoman Empire or Israel it takes time for these things to happen especially the strength of the economy but again could we be witnessing the beginning uh, of the collapse of the American Empire so I thought that was very interesting to uh, go over with you and for you to pray about this. We're seeing all these patterns of the Shemitah cycle, but also the celestial bodies in the sky that's correlating the different empires together. And what did we witness after the solar eclipse in 2017 in America? We witnessed three of the worst hurricanes in U.S. history. Okay, Maria, Irma, and Harvey. Uh, we all remember those. And uh, also the deadliest mass shooting in U.S. history in Las Vegas. Uh, that was after uh, the, uh, that occurred, uh, so to speak. And then we have a solar eclipse coming in 2024, which I find very interesting. And if you look at the 2017 solar eclipse and the 2024 solar eclipse, is going to make an X. And as we all know, uh, X hits the spot. Okay, so it's almost like a target that we have on our backs unless we repent as a nation and we abolish. Okay, so it's, it's, true repentance means turning away, okay, from what you're doing. Okay, so until we abolish the same-sex marriage, until we abolish the killing of our children, the unborn, then there is no true repentance. Okay, and then without true repentance, there's no true revival as a nation. Now, I know all the remnant in America, uh, all of the believers in America are praying against these things, and we're all, I believe, going to be protected, but our nation will be judged according to the laws that are in our books, and that is totally against what God's commandments is. So, no, we are not a Christian nation. A Christian nation does not sacrifice 63 million uh, children, and it does not flaunt uh, homosexuality at the at the highest court of our land, the Supreme Court, and also the White House. Uh, President Obama uh, covered it with the rainbow. Uh, that's against God's will. That's against God's commandments. And the highest courts and also the highest office in the land has uh, supported that. So there will be judgment upon that. As we look forward into the celestial bodies in the sky, in 2018 and 2019, there was three occurrences as well, and we'd like to go through those real quick. Uh, there was a blood moon uh, on the day of Tuba Shavat, okay, Shavat 15. We've covered this in the prophecy of Zechariah 1 and the template that goes along with Donald Trump as president. Okay, I believe these were warning signs for many reasons not to divide the land, but also the judgment that was coming. Remember, we inhabit uh, the second largest Jewish population in the world. Uh, Israel is the first, okay? So we have 40% of the Jewish people in the world uh, living in America. Remember, the blood moons are for the Jewish people. I believe those were uh, signs that the Jewish people were gonna make Aliyah to the promised land eventually, that judgment was coming to America. And uh, it goes into the prophecy of the fishermen and the hunters, and we're going to get into the book series of that after the next video. But in short, it, the Jewish people will return back uh, to the promised land because of the hunters and the fishermen. Uh, the hunters will provoke them to go back, okay? And what are you seeing? You're seeing anti-Semitism rise like you've never seen in America, in Europe, etc. So this goes along with that prophecy, but obviously they were on uh, three important dates, Tuba Shavat, Shavat 15, blood moon, Tuba Av, which is the day of love, blood moon, and then there was one on Tuba Shavat again on uh, the calendar of trees, which is symbolic for the children of Israel in Zechariah 1. So we're seeing all these blood moons, we're seeing these solar eclipses over America, very important as we go forward. And we just got a lunar eclipse on July 4th as well. Independent state again could that be a marker for us that freedom is really coming to an end in America as we look upon our nation uh, right now okay so it's important to understand God, God's celestial bodies in the sky what they mean when they fall on the biblical calendar very important dates and I believe we're about to witness these things and we're about to see the chastisement the shaking of America we're already seeing it right now and on the Shemitah cycle of 2021 2022 
I think it's very important to look into this. Uh, we are about to enter into the sixth year of it, and we're going to get into that when we close. But it's very important to understand the Shemitah cycle of 2021-2022, what it means. It's important to understand God's celestial bodies in the sky. Okay, the solar eclipses, the blood moons, especially when they fall on the feast days, I believe he's getting our attention our attention of what's going on. So now let's look at one thing I wanted to mention with you on how the Lord works in my personal opinion with the two great national sins. Okay. As we know, 1973 was uh, when abortion came into the law books of our nation. Uh, the Lord has a number is 50. The number 50 is very important in the Bible. It's called the Jubilee. Uh, this is not going to be the Jubilee year mentioned in the Bible, but could the Lord uh, get Jubilee from 1973 to 2023 is 50 years. Could, be, could we witness the Lord getting his vengeance on America, the blood crying out on the ground, 50 years later, 2023, which is right after that Shemitah cycle ends in 2022, could he be getting the Jubilee uh, for the children that have been murdered by, the America, by America from 1973 to 2023? Could we be witnessing his Jubilee? And we're going to get into how he deals with behavior like this. And this is something that we find in the scriptures. And this is one of God's attributes. Uh, I want you to understand that God is a God of mercy. He's a God of grace. He's a God of love. He's a God of long suffering, of kindness, of goodness. But when a nation turns their back on him, when a nation that once knew God turns their back on him with abortion, with the apostasy like the homosexuality and all of the other things that we're seeing. Okay, there's pornography, there's drugs, alcohol, all of these things that, we're, that we, we are called common, that we're calling good, that's really evil, then eventually his mercy ends, eventually his grace ends, eventually he's going to pour out his judgment upon the land that once knew him but have turned their back against them, and he is going to pour out his judgment upon that nation. And he deals with this by three things, by the pestilence, by the famine, and by the sword. Well, folks, we're already seeing the pestilence, the plague, the coronavirus. Okay, that is a plague. We're starting to see it. Again, just like the Ottoman Empire, three years before solar eclipse. And then look what's happened uh, with them as the beginning of the collapse. Look at us. Three years, solar eclipse, not 2017. Now we're dealing with the plague, okay, the coronavirus, and I don't believe we're through with the plague yet. So he deals with judgment in three, in three uh, ways. The pestilence, the plague, the sword, and the famine. And we already have the plague, okay? And we would like to read through this with the scriptures to confirm this. In Leviticus 18, 21, it says, And you shall not let any of your descendants pass through the fire to Moloch nor shall you profane the name of your God, I am the Lord. Again, this is a commandment. Again, you cannot pass your children through the fire to Moloch. Well, Moloch is abortion today. That's murdering our children. It's the same thing, just in a different form. And that's any nation. If you think any nation, he's going to allow them to uh, murder 63 million kids. Who are we kidding? Are we kidding ourselves? Of course, the judgment of the Almighty is going to come eventually on us if we do not change the laws of the land, okay? In Jeremiah 18, 7 through 10, it says this, The instant I speak concerning a nation and concerning a kingdom to pluck up, to pull down, and to destroy it, if that nation against whom I have spoken turns from its evil, I will relent of the disaster that I thought to bring upon it. And the instant I speak concerning a nation and concerning a kingdom to build and to plant it, if it does evil in my sight so that it does not obey my voice, then I will relent concerning the good which I have said would benefit it. So again, the Lord's very clear with this with the prophet Jeremiah. Again, the prophet Jeremiah is a prophet to the nations, okay? Not just to Israel, but to the nations. And in this passage, it says very clearly that any kingdom, any nation to his desire that he's going to do good to, if that nation turns against him, then he is going to chastise them. He is going to judge them according to his will. Okay, now let's look at how God deals with a nation if it does not repent and turn away from its abominations. Now, this is I'm talking about America. If we turn away from it, if we abolish it, 
then the Lord's going to bless us. He will relent. Okay, think of Nineveh. He will relent from doing it. Okay, uh, okay. So in Jeremiah 32, uh, 30 through 36, it says, For the children of Israel have provoked me only to anger with the works of their hands, says the Lord. For this city has, be, has been to me a provocation of my anger and my fury from the day that they built it, even to this day. So I will remove from it before my face, before all the evil of the children of Israel and for children of Judah, which they have done to provoke me for, to anger. They, their kings, their princes, their priests, their prophets, the men of Judah and the inhabitants of Jerusalem, and they have turned to me uh, the back and not the face, though I taught them rising up early and teaching them, yet they have not listened to receive my instruction. But they set their abominations in the house, which is called by my name to defile it. And they have built the high places of Baal, which are the valley of the son of Hinnom, to cause their sons and their daughters to pass through the fire to Moloch, which I did not command them, nor did it come to my mind that they should do this uh, abomination to cause Judah to sin. Now, therefore, thus says the Lord, the God of Israel, concerning the city which you say, it shall be delivered into the hand of the king of Babylon by the sword, by the famine, and by the pestilence. So the Lord is very clear. If we're a Christian nation, we're built on Judeo-Christian Christian values. This behavior, he is the same yesterday, today, and forever. He does not change. There's no shadow of turning with him. In any nation that does what we have done with the 63 million aborted babies, the little lambs, and also the abominations that we're doing with homosexuality and all the other apostasy who are we kidding he is going to send the plague the, or the pestilence the sword and the famine if we do not repent if we do not turn away as a nation and get these things abolished uh, we will receive the judgment of the almighty in jeremiah 19 4 through 9 it says because they have forsaken me and made uh, this an alien place because they have burned incense to other gods whom that neither they, their fathers, nor the kings of Judah have known, and have filled this place with the blood of the innocents. They have also built the high places of Baal to burn their sons with fire for burnt offerings to Baal, which I did not command or speak, nor did it come to my mind. Therefore, behold, the days are coming, says the Lord, that this place shall no, be, no more be called Tophet or the valley of the son of Hanon, but the valley of slaughter. And I will make void the council of Judah and Jerusalem in this place, and I'll cause them to fall by the sword before their enemies and by the hands of those who seek their lives. Their corpses I will give as meat for the birds of the heaven and for the beasts of the earth. I will make this city desolate and a hissing. Everyone who passes by it will be astonished and hiss because of its plagues. And I will cause them to eat the flesh of their sons and the flesh of their daughters. And everyone shall eat the flesh of his friend and seize and in the desperation with which their enemies who seek their lives, they shall drive them in despair. So this is very serious language and a very serious chastisement and judgment, okay, upon a nation who turns their ways against God, especially one who once knew God and once upheld the creation plan, once upheld uh, the values of marriage and etc., and not the apostasy that we're seeing with Amer America today. Uh, this is a strict warning of what happens. It's the famine, it's the pestilence, it's the sword that will come. <clears throat> Okay, and this is how a nation, and this is how God deals with a nation when His judgment is set in stone. After He sends His prophets, sends His teachers, sends His preachers, sends His messengers uh, to the people to repent, sends them to the to the national uh, leaders, uh, if you will, the president, the congressman, and all these things that we've seen with America. Certainly, they've all been warned. Okay, this is what happens when the judgment is set. In Jeremiah 14, 11 through 12, it says, Then the Lord said to me, Do not pray for these people, for their good. When they fast, I will not hear their cry. And when they offer burnt offering and grain offering, I will not accept them. But I will consume them by the sword, the famine, and the pestilence. Jeremiah 15, 1 through 2, it says, Then the Lord said to me, Even if Moses and Samuel stood before me, my mind would not be favorable towards these people, Cast them out of my sight and let them go forth. And it shall be if they say to you, where shall we go? Then you shall tell them. Thus says the Lord, such are for death to death and such are for the sword, the sword. And such are for the famine, the famine. And such are for captivity, captivity. In Jeremiah 34, uh, 17, it says, therefore, thus says the Lord, you have not obeyed me by proclaiming liberty. Uh, everyone 
uh, to his brother and to his neighbor, behold, I proclaim liberty to you by the sword, by the pestilence, by the famine, declares the Lord, and I will make you a horror to all the kingdoms on earth. This is very stern language. This is very dire language that we're dealing with here. How the Lord deals with a nation who once knew him, who's turned their backs against him as a nation and put the in the law books what we have put with the abortion and what, with also homosexuality and also all the other apostasies that we're seeing upon our nation right now. This is what he says. He says, eventually do not pray for these people because again you're going against his will if you're praying for these people that he's about to judge okay and there's nothing wrong with praying now i love praying for our nation praying for our leaders but if we look at the template he's saying he told jeremiah quit praying for these people because he's already made up his mind the judgment is set and who wants to be against uh, the lord's judgment okay we've got to be praying for the lord's will to be done for ultimately redemption and forgiveness and grace and mercy and he says he will consume them by the fire, or I'm sorry, by the sword, by the famine, and by the pestilence. Okay, and then we read in Jeremiah 15 how he says, even if Moses and Samuel stood before him, two of the greatest prophets, he will not relent. We do not want to get there, friends. We do not want to get to the point where if Moses and Samuel stood up for America, the Lord will still not relent. Okay, we do not want to get to that point, and I believe we're very, very close to that point. If not already at that point, I believe we're very, very close to where uh, he's, his judgment is set for America. Okay, and then we read in Jeremiah 34, 17, this is what we say. If we do not give liberty to these unborn uh, that are going to be murdered, if we do not give liberty uh, to his creation plan, this is what he's going to do. He's going to give us liberty to the sword. He's going to give us liberty to the pestilence, and he's going to give us liberty to the famine. He's already given us liberty to the pestilence with the coronavirus. So we need to wake up and understand one of the three judgments is already in place, and we could have two more to go. You know, and this is what we have to understand is the American pride that we're dealing with. And people say, oh, America will never be uh, invaded uh, on the homeland, so to speak, like we were in Hawaii, you know, Pearl Harbor. And that is nonsense. If a few terrorists uh, were allowed or they, whatever, however you look at 9-11, if a few terrorists were able to take down the World Trade Centers, Trust me, the Lord will bring a nation against us on our homeland. There's been many people with many dreams and visions about this, about foreigners, of a foreign army on our land. And if we do not repent as a nation, if we do not stand up and be counted for as believers in the remnant, I wish we would protest uh, the killing of the unborn like we're protesting these other things. And I'm not saying that in any kind of way, but I'm meaning if we would stand up as a church, if we would stand up as believers and go directly against the killing of our unborn, then we would get things accomplished instead of building the four walls of our churches. Okay, and there's nothing wrong with that, but if we would stand up for the killing of the unborn, if we would stand up against the creation or what he's doing against the creation plan with same-sex marriage, okay, that is against God's creation plan. Okay, that's not how it works okay with homosexuality that's an abomination okay so we've got to understand that we've got to stand up and be counted for individually yes we repent but also as a nation until we do that as a nation then we're going to continue to see the judgments of the almighty with the pestilence the plague which we're seeing now the sword and the famine, okay? And we have to understand that. And I believe it goes directly according to the Shemitah cycle. I believe America will eventually, will eventually fall on a Shemitah cycle, in my personal opinion, just because we rose on a Shemitah cycle. 1917, we rose. 1945, we were, excuse me, we were confirmed as the superpower, okay, of the world. And I believe that we will fall on the Shemitah cycle, whether it's this Shemitah cycle, whether it's the next Shemitah cycle, whether it's 50 years or whatever it may be, I believe that America is ripe for judgment. We are ripe for it, and we need to all understand this. Yes, the Lord is merciful. Yes, he's, he's full of grace. Yes, full of kindness. Yes, he's full of forgiveness. But true repentance means turning away. Uh, from what you've done okay and in this case in the national sin two national sins we've got to get those out of our law books or we will continue to receive the judgment of the almighty or the chastisement or the shaking of the almighty okay so it's important for us to understand this and as we close i want to bring one more revelation uh, to the table and again i want to give credit to jonathan Cobb for bringing this out 
But in 2014, on the Shemitah cycle, uh, we had, that was the beginning of the Shemitah cycle, 2014, and then it ended in 2015 in the fall. Uh, there were two cows that came on the scene, okay? And right when the Shemitah cycle began, there were two uh, cows that came on the scene. The first one on September 20th, 2014, there was a cow that came on with a beautiful number seven on his head. I mean, it's beautiful as you can see with the image. Uh, this cow was born. And then five days later on September 25th, there was another cow that came on the scene that the media reported and it had an ugly number seven on it. So we all know the story in Genesis 41 about Pharaoh's dream about the good cow and the bad cow, the seven years of plenty to seven years of famine and the rabbinical thought on this is we had seven years of good from 2014 Shemitah to 2021 Shemitah and then after 2022 we have the seven years of bad okay that's the rabbinical thinking you can do what you want to with that but in my opinion it aligns perfectly because i think there's no question over the last uh, five years we've been very prosperous okay as a nation and really as a world okay and we can make the case that we're in the seven good years okay and i know the coronavirus has affected it a little bit but then are we about to see once we get into that next Shemitah cycle, which will begin after uh, 2022, the, the uh, Feast of Trumpets 2022, will we start to see the famine? Will we start to see the bad cow, which is the prophetic understanding of Genesis 41? So friends, we're into some very important times right now, more than ever right now, uh, when we're looking at America, okay? Uh, we all love America. We all love what we should be standing for, which is Judeo-Christian values with Judeo-Christian standards. But we as a church, we as believers have failed the Lord because we have not been outspoken enough on these critical issues that will affect our nation. And obviously if it affects our nation, it affects our personal lives as well. So whether or not we believe that we have a call for this, it will affect us one way or another, just like this coronavirus has affected us as well. So friends, we're in very important times. We're at the crossroads. We are weighed in the balance right now with America. And I wanted to bring this to life and add to what uh, Jonathan Kahn has uh, brought up with the mystery of the Shemitah and how it's affected America every seven years. And when we look at the prophetic foreshadows and the pattern of these things for seven years and the World Trade Centers and all of the things that we've discussed, we're at the crossroads right now. We're at very important times. And then when you look at the pattern of the Ottoman Empire with the solar eclipse, and then they started co to collapse three years later, are we about to witness that same, uh, that same judgment as well? So friends, this next Shemitah cycle of 2021 to 2022 is very important. We could be witnessing the beginning of the collapse of America, and then seven years later, we could see the collapse. Remember the 28 years we've discussed, 20, 2001 to 2029, there's 28 years. And I think we can all agree that we have only fallen deeper into apostasy since 2001 with 2015, with the homosexuality, you got the LGBTQT, all these different letters of, of that. Uh, you got transgender, you've got all of these things, good, evil, evil, good in America and really upon the world. I believe the Shemitah cycle is really going to affect the entire world uh, come in 2021 and 2022. So what we need to understand as believers who are following God's laws, who are following God's commandments to the best of our ability, that I want you to pray into this in Leviticus 25. Remember, the sixth year is going to be a triple blessing, okay? And I want to leave you uh, with some positive uh, news and for you something for you to pray into, uh, some hope for you, okay? I know we've discussed a lot of uh, terrible things that could that have happened and that will happen or could happen and those kind of things, but I want to leave you with some encouragement and some hope that, number one, when you're in Yeshua, Jesus, there's no better place to be. He is our salvation. He is our hope, and He is going to come back and set all the this straight okay and we can't wait for his return so that's the first thing is be in Yeshua get more deeper than ever with him uh, get deeper and deeper with him and you are going to be good we want to pray for that Jeremiah anointing that we will be saved in that day whenever that is when America is judged 
you will be hidden in the day of judgment with that, just kind of like the prophet Jeremiah was and all the other prophets and uh, the messengers that uh, were on the same call as he was as well. So we want to pray into that as well, that we're protected, our families are protected, uh, the remnant is protected of the Lord, but also we want to pray into the Shemitah cycle, okay? The prophetic understanding of it, the principle of it, and on the sixth year, which we're about to get into on the Feast of Trumpets this year, we're in the closing of the fifth year now, the sixth year will begin on the Feast of Trumpets, which is September 18th, Okay, we want to pray for a triple blessing this sixth year. No matter what happens uh, with the economy, some believe that we're going to have a fall uh, with the economy this fall. You know, there's going to be a collapse or whatever it may be, and it could. Okay, but if we follow the pattern, okay, and I want to follow the pattern that the Lord has established through the last 50 years, okay, now that's not saying that He can't do it tomorrow, He can't do it this fall, He can't do it in springtime. Of course, He can do anything He wants. But if we look at the pattern that he has given us and the warnings that he has given us every seven years, consistently 66, 73, 80, 87, 94, 01, 08, 2015, it's been consistent every seven years we see an economic downfall, okay? And there's going to be one that's going to be a very big collapse, and this could be the beginning of that in 2021, 2022. So until that time, we want to pray for the sixth year blessing because we're about to enter into the sixth year and it's a triple blessing. I want to pray that over you and your family, uh, my family, our friends, the remnant, whoever's doing their part in God's kingdom, who's trying their best to follow God's laws and commandments. We want to pray into that sixth year, that triple blessing that we have. So there is hope among destruction. Okay, read the prophet Jeremiah. There is hope amongst the destruction okay and just like the prophet joel says it's going to be awesome it's going to be terrible as we go closer and closer to the messiah's second coming okay and we're going to see some awesome things but we're going to see some terrible things we got to be spiritually prepped we've got to have our minds right our emotions right our mentality right because we are into these times where we could see possible judgment upon america we're already seeing the pestilence and we, we know what comes next, the famine and the sword, okay, if we do not repent. So well, I want to leave you with that, that in my personal opinion, we're going to start to see the collapse of the American empire. There's no empire on the earth, including Israel, including Rome, or any empire that has done the things that we have done that have put the children to death. Okay, 63 million has flaunted homosexuality, has flaunted transgender, has flaunted alcohol, has flaunted drugs, has flaunted pornography. All of these things that we have done, no empire has ever stood the test of time through that. Especially a nation that once knew God and stood on the principles of God, that once knew God, no nation, Israel, America, no nation will stand okay with that. So, friends, I hope this has been helpful for you. There is hope. That hope is Yeshua. Stay in Him. Pray upon this sixth year, this triple blessing, and we're just going to see what happens, okay? Uh, the Lord can do anything. He can do it tomorrow. He can do it this fall. But if we stick to the pattern, I believe we're going to see the pattern come true again. To what degree? We'll just have to wait and see. But it's important to prepare and to pray into this, okay? Pray into how the Lord wants you to prepare uh, physically, with food, with anything that He's putting on your mind. But the most important thing is to prepare your parts and that is with Yeshua. Prepare your mentality as we enter into these times as we could be seeing the beginning of the collapse of the American Empire and the Shemitah cycle and then we'll see what happens seven years later. But until that time let's just pray into this. Uh, I just want to bless you with this. I hope this has been helpful. Please pray into this. Uh, friends and stay tuned to next time because we're going to talk about Israel and the Shemitah cycle which is the final Shemitah and next in the next video but until that time friends may god bless you may he keep you may his face shine upon you and give you his grace may he lift up his countenance upon you and give you his everlasting shalom my name is chadwick harvey and you've reached faithful performance <laughs>